Hello everyone, my name is Wendy Boyce and I work for Ingham Intermediate School District. I have two roles there with Ingham. One of those roles is the co-coordinator of our Ingham Great Start Collaborative. And the other role I have is outreach and recruitment for a centralized online preschool application that connects families to Head Start, to GSRP, and to the tuition options of those programs that have that tuition free component as well. That website is Ingham Preschool, and I speak with families about their experiences with connecting to preschool. I speak with them about eligibility. I speak with them about program options, and I hear a lot of stories about how eligibility impacts um, their family. So I'm going to share a little bit of data today, um, Ingham uh, ISD-wide, and then also share a couple of stories of families that have recently talked with me about eligibility and school readiness. So Ingham Great Start Collaborative is a coalition of human service providers, families, and other partners working together to ensure that all children from birth to age eight have a system of universal, comprehensive, and coordinated community-based program supports and services. Parents are a really important part of our Great Start Collaborative. We have a family coalition and a parent liaison that works specifically with families and engages them in this work. Our Great Start Collaborative work aligns with the four Michigan Early Childhood Outcomes, which are that children are born healthy, that they're healthy, thriving, and developmentally on track from birth to third grade, that they are developmentally ready to succeed at school at time of school entry, and they're prepared to succeed in fourth grade and beyond by reading proficiently by the end of third grade. So our work aligns with these uh, state outcomes. I know this is small. We, Ingham Great Start Collaborative, recently went through a strategic planning process, and we looked at a lot of quantitative data and gathered some qualitative data from stakeholders, including lots of parents, to come up with goals and objectives that align with these four early childhood outcomes. So for the next three years, we're gonna be looking at um, access to prenatal health care. We're going to be look at, looking at parenting supports and services, especially in light of our rising abuse and neglect numbers here in Ingham County. We're gonna be looking at what does it mean to be school ready and how do we create a community shared understanding of that. And then we're going to be looking at some of those foundational skills that uh, children need to have for early literacy to be ready to succeed, uh, to be ready to um, read proficiently by the end of third grade. So that's kind of our upcoming goals and objectives that we'll be working on. So we do know that, there, uh, that early childhood education is important. I think we all can understand that those experiences children have when uh, they are little lead to great outcomes later on. And we do know there's gaps and barriers for families to access those services. So today I'm gonna speak uh, about three focuses. One, supports and services for uh, our children who are the youngest. Um, two, uh, high quality education and uh, ways that access is sometimes impacted. And the three, that school readiness. What does it mean to be school ready? And how does that uh, impact third grade reading? So we know school readiness doesn't start at four years old when a child goes to preschool and they're looking at the skills they need to be ready to go to kindergarten. We know that it starts uh, from birth, even prenatally. So supports and services for families uh, with children from the very youngest ages we have Early On here, which is a, a program to support children um, with developmental delays from birth to three. We know that children who have developmental delays are at risk of be, not being ready for success when they enter kindergarten. So I have some local Ingham data here. Um, for the 2016-17 uh, year, Ingham processed 1,063 referrals for children from birth to three. So that's three to five a work day. Um, we have 37 staff that provide or provided services to 963 children. A lot of children that we're reaching. Um, of those 963 children, uh, 197 were eligible for Michigan special education. So they did get some funding from the state 
to get those services, whether it be a teacher, speech, occupational therapy, physical therapy. These children were the ones that have some, some significant delays and they qualified for special education. Uh, 766 children had developmental delays. They weren't uh, what qualified them for special education. They were our little ones who with some adequate supports and services, they'd be caught up um, when they got to school. Yet, in the state of Michigan, barring Flint, we don't have any state funding for early on Part C. Um, the funding that we get is through some federal money, uh, Medicaid billing, and uh, supplemental funding from the ISD and local school districts. So we're serving these great number of children with less than adequate funding. And we know that with adequate funding and adequate supports and services, it would really impact these children's ability to be, pre be prepared to succeed once they got to school. So looking at policy implications, uh, we need to begin appropriating state funding for uh, early on, that we know that would make a difference um, in lives of children and in lives of the family. It's a, a program that supports not only children, but the families as well. So another uh, focus is access to quality early childhood education. I said I do outreach and recruitment for our InghamPreschool.org system. It is a centralized online application that a family can fill out from their mobile device. They can call a toll-free number. They can do a paper application, and it connects them to um, hopefully a tuition-free preschool if they're eligible, and if they're not eligible, to a tuition option. And if they're not eligible or don't want that, then to maybe some other early learning opportunities and supports. So with our online application system, we could gather some data since its inception about three years ago. In 2016, Ingham Great Start applied for some home visit expansion money, and so we gathered some data from our Ingham Preschool uh, system to look at need here in our, in our area. So in uh, the 2015-16 school year, 1,532 three-year-olds applied for preschool through the Ingham Preschool system. So we got a lot of preschooler three-year-olds that are applying for preschool. Of that, 954 were not enrolled in a preschool program. So the ones who did get in were either in a Head Start classroom or they were in a tuition option where their families paid a monthly fee. For the children who weren't eligible, or for the children who weren't enrolled, some of them were Head Start eligible, and Head Start eligibility is 100% of the federal poverty level. For a family of four, that's about a family income of 24,000, I think 500 or under. So we had children who were eligible for Head Start, but there wasn't a slot available. Or we had children that uh, exceeded that Head Start income eligibility and the families did not pay for a tuition option. So we have a lot of three-year-olds out there that aren't connected to a high-quality preschool. And we do know that two years of a high-quality preschool helps children be ready for kindergarten at an even greater level. So for those children who aren't eligible for preschool or aren't eligible for child care assistance through DHHS, there's a gap. Um, they are either at home, um, they are, there's other early learning opportunities with play groups or home visiting, um, which are definitely early childhood education programs. Um, but a lot of times parents want to send their children to preschool. That impacts families. It impacts families' potential availability to work. One of the stories I'm gonna share is actually from this week. A, a mom called me, she had a two-year-old, uh, she got her child enrolled in one of our five-star child care centers here in our area. It's ready to start on Monday. She has a job. She applied for uh, child care assistance and was denied. Her husband is working, so she has that family income. Um, but she was calling me to let me know that her child wasn't going to be able to be enrolled because she couldn't pay the tuition um, for this five-star quality preschool or child care center. Um, Child care here in the state of Michigan can run a family uh, well over $10,000 a year. Um, so it is a huge need in our community. 
So with this mom, uh, I discussed a couple other maybe child care center options, um, and she said she had explored them, um, and she said either they were too expensive or that they had waiting lists. And so this mom wanted to know what she should do. I said she should contact the child care center, let them know that um, she needed to disenroll her child, and she was going to quit her job. So that's going to impact her family then, and that, um, that gainfully employed and uh, working towards better outcomes for her family and for her child. So um, another thing when children are enrolled and eligible for high quality preschool, we see some program options that aren't always making it easy for them to use those tuition free preschool options. Things like transportation, uh, before and after school care. Um, many of our local school districts have a school of choice policy um, that is different for preschool than it is for the K-12 system. So they might have one child that's going to one school district, but because they live in another school district, that's where they can get in the easiest, and that creates difficulties for families logistically. So a lot of families I speak with, they have one car. And the uh, person in the household who might be working uses that car to go to work. And if their transportation is not provided, that child misses out on that high quality early childhood uh, opportunity, even though they're eligible. So there's a lot, I talk with families and they say, it should be easy to get your child into preschool. It was easy when I was little. And it's become more complex for families to enroll in, in programs. So, a couple of recommendations looking at policy. Um, we need to consider raising our child care and development program eligibility. Um, it is my understanding that Michigan is the lowest in the, the nation with eligibility at 125% of the federal poverty level. There was some discussion um, in the state budget about raising it to 130. Um, I don't know for sure if that happened or not. Even if we raise it to 150% of federal poverty level, we would still be below the national median of an eligibility of 182. So we need to look at how can we support families in being gainfully employed and going to school and having those opportunities for their, for their children. We also do need to uh, fund two gen programs or for programs already in existence, use a two-gen lens. And that basically means we're looking at the adults, the parents, we're looking at the children, we're looking at wraparound care. Um, are, are those Head Start GSRP slots, if a family's working, are they just a school day? So they go from 8 to 3.30? What if mom has to be to work or dad has to be to work at 7.30 and there's no childcare on, on site? So we need to look at to Jen and not only supporting those children enrolled in those programs, but also the parents. Um, and then the last focus is the shared understanding of school readiness. I have a little bit of data again up here. Um, Michigan wide, one third of children are prepared to start kindergarten. Um, and we have some data from when uh, Ingham uh, Great Start Collaborative was doing their strategic planning. We got from Ingham ISD that 67% of children were meeting uh, literacy uh, screening called phoneme, segment, phoneme segmentation at the winter benchmark. So 67% of children. Now when we think of that and we think of third grade reading, you know, how is that related, this, this literacy at kindergarten and third grade reading. Um, we do know that children who are not reading proficiently by the end of third grade are four times more likely to fail to graduate high school on time. And again, here at Ingham ISD uh, in 2016, 51.6% of our third graders were uh, either partially or not proficient on the M-STEP English language arts. And those outcomes are worse for uh, when you look at desegregated data. So um, 
African American third graders, uh, third graders who are English language learners, um, third graders from families with lower economic status, um, third graders who are eligible for free and reduced lunch. So then we know that there's the worst, the, uh, the numbers are even worse for them. So uh, to look at that, Ingham Great Start Collaborative has a school readiness advisory committee. And over the last couple years, we've worked to develop a local definition of what does it mean to be ready for school. And this kind of goes to the other story I was going to tell um, today. Um, I spoke with a family a couple weeks ago. Uh, mom had applied for preschool last year when her child was three, turning four in December. So didn't meet the GSRP age eligibility of four years old by now it's September 1st. Um, the family was barely over the income eligibility level for Head Start, so the child couldn't get into Head Start. Um, so she was frustrated with that experience and the eligibility. Um, she was frustrated with um, some communication gaps. So when I spoke with her, she said, well, I'm, I'm not going to send him this year. I, she shared her experience last year and the eligibility. She said, He's got his ABCs, his one, two, threes, his numbers, his shapes. He's going to be ready. I don't think he's ready. He's going to be ready for kindergarten. I don't think he's ready for preschool, though, because um, he's shy. And he has trouble separating from his dad and I. And he doesn't do well in groups. And uh, he lacks some of that self-regulation. So I had to gently push back on her and suggest that if he's not attending a high quality preschool, what is that experience gonna look like for him when he attends kindergarten? Now there are other ways that a child can gain those skills. Maybe uh, parks and rec class, a play group, play dates, but in this structured high quality environment, those are some skills that the teachers are going to be intentionally focused on. And those academic skills are important for kindergarten readiness but we know those social emotional skills are as well. So through our gentle conversation, we talked about some options. Um, many of our GSRP classrooms are now a school day and there are some half day options. So we connected her with a half day option in a school district that she didn't live in, so she would have to provide transportation. But she was thankful and happy that we even had this conversation about the impact if he didn't attend this year. So um, we know that school readiness is so important and looking at third grade reading. Um, so our school readiness advisory committee worked to create this local definition of school readiness. Um, Capital Area District Library is part of our um, committee and they took the lead on developing an Ingham early learning calendar, which is a calendar um, that has school readiness with these seven domains. The domains are language development, literacy development, math development, physical development, social development, emotional development, and approaches to learning. So the calendar includes these uh, domains, but has activities that a parent can do, one activity a day, um, from birth all the way to school entry to help prepare children to better succeed once they get uh, to kindergarten age. So these tools are on the Ingham Great Start website, and I'm doing a shameless plug right now. Um, our website is inghamgreatstart.org, um, and these tools are available electronically at our website. Um, we have a lot of information, including these resources, data, the work that we're doing on our, on our website. So um, some policy recommendations um, for school readiness, looking at supporting opportunities for parents to build literacy skills. Um, Claire shared about math, and that's very important. And we know literacy skills are important too, um, that uh, reading a book every day. Um, Sam families will share that if they have limited literacy skills, that they're worried about sharing a book with their child. They're worried about reading a book. And so are we building those literacy skills in parents and are we giving them some tools to do literacy even without reading? Um, 
And then also looking at supporting um, opportunities for family and engagement and family voice and uh, child's education. Um, back in uh, April, Ingham Great Start Collaborative, along with the Coalition for College and Career Readiness, did a panel of parents who ranged from age 13 to postdoc, and they talked about their experiences with accessing uh, early childhood uh, education uh, supports, uh, primarily having their child go to a quality child care center and how that impacted their ability to either enroll in school or to stay in school to persist. So that was a, an opportunity for 13 parents to tell their stories. We need more of those opportunities for parents to share. Thank you.